Hey, let's take a look at something that has not been out of the package in a very long time. Now, I know when I worked at KB Toys, the store shut down in 2003. These were uh, made in 1997. So it was like, it was not at the end when these were sold. I know this was not from my own personal collection. I bought this from Wilhelm. If you want to find out more about Wilhelm, go to his website or his, uh, I guess it's just a YouTube site for the 118, which is a, uh, he is a 118 scale in, uh, enthusiast, which I am too. Um, but I also, for superheroes, I don't know. I feel like it's fine to have them in this scale. This is the scale that we grew up with. Now, the very first Wolverine figure I ever owned was the Secret Wars Wolverine, which was slightly bigger than the G.I. Joe's. I think it's like 4.5 inches. And about this scale, I'm guessing. It's what I'm guessing is... He's around here somewhere. I don't think I ever sold him or got rid of him. He had the silver claws before you ask because I never even knew there were black claw ones. Uh, not that I would have bought those because that would be weird. It's why would they be black? They were silver claws that popped on top of his hands. They didn't pop out of his hands or anything. Uh, so that was back in the 80s. It was the Secret Wars collection. I think they were about this size, maybe a tad bit smaller. Um, but that seems like that's the superhero scale for me personally. G.I. Joe and other human non-superpowered beings, 118 scale seems to be perfect for them, especially when they're driving vehicles. Um, this one does have a vehicle and it was made in 1997. If you look at it carefully, we'll, oh, by the way, the 15 sticker on the front was the price that he put on it. Uh, so I got it from him. He was having a sale and I got a bunch of stuff at one time. So he got it for 10 bucks uh, for this. Thank you very much, Will. So these are called Space Riders. Toward the end of the X-Men toy franchise, which of course, if you watch the cartoon, you'll know the cartoon is called X-Men 97. There's a reason for that. Uh, it's picking up from the 90s cartoon, which was not just 97, it was before that. Um, so it's like, I'm wondering if season two of X-Men 97 will be called X-Men 98. So the uh, popularity of the X-Men franchise has been peaked again from people who enjoyed it the first time around. Also in this collection, we have Cyclops with Light Up Cosmic Cruiser. We have uh, Professor X with Light Up Space Sled. We have uh, Jean Grey with Light Up Hyperjet. We have Beast with Deep Space Cosmic Blaster. Hmm. It's the only one it doesn't sound like it's a ride on. But when you put them all together, you have something like the Fantastic Force Fantastic Heart, which also is uh, something you can split up into different vehicles. We have the docking connector. We have a C bottom for a panel for more details. Okay. We have a docking connector. So I guess it can dock in other ways as well. This is the way that they showed to set it up with him in the front. Uh, we have the hinge star screen, which I guess while you're flying through space, you don't stars itch in the face like bugs. <laughs> you can't make this stuff. It's just so funny. All right. We got the power plug. So I guess you could plug it in the wall when you get home battery compartment uh, we have uh, blast armor which is these massively huge hulking shields that he has on his shoulders we have a removable oxygen mask and we have a slashing space claws oh i thought there's like bug legs so there's space claws so what's the story behind this well i've never seen this in the cartoon but then again a lot of the stuff they made toward the end was definitely not in the cartoon like the x-men ninjas which i personally dug a lot all right, when Professor Xavier senses thoughts of evil alien invaders planning to take over the Earth, he knows the X-Men must stop them. The X-Men don special space gear and race into space on laser-shooting stellar vehicles to battle the alien threat. When the aliens surround them, the X-Men combine their individual vehicles to form Voltron. Wait, no. To form a laser-shooting, missile-launching battle cruiser. Wait, battle cruiser? That sounds like something from the Micronauts. All right, uh, that repelled the invasion and saves the Earth. What are they saving it from? Because I don't see any aliens on here. So I'm trying to figure out, are we talking about those little aliens that look like bug uh, versions of, well, Xenomorphs from Alien. That they, they basically, uh, I forgot what those are called, but they copied those, honestly, <laughs> you could tell. Are we talking about the uh, Shial TR or, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what we're really talking about here. Um, Yes, so the X-Men did go into space in the cartoon. That's how the whole Phoenix Saga happened, which was completely the thing that ticked me off as, um, well, I wasn't saying as a kid, but as a, uh, a guy that was uh, huge into the X-Men comic books back in the 80s, and then suddenly the 90s was, uh-oh, I ripped it. Oh, no, I didn't say the pretty packaging. The packaging is beautiful. Look at the uh, artwork on it. 
it's mostly just pictures. I don't think there is any artwork on it, to be honest with you. On the bottom, we see that how you can combine the uh, one, two, three, four, five ships with little ports. Hmm. Place left hand on power plug to make vehicles uh, move back and forth. So is there a magnet involved? Replace the AA batteries as shown. Replace the, oh, so there's batteries in here. Whoa. These batteries have been in here for over, oh my gosh, like 25 years. Uh, maybe 30 almost. Yeah, no, 25 years. I'm trying to get the box open without tearing the, the package. I don't really want to mess up this package anymore because I'd like to preserve something this old. When something's old, you want to preserve it. When it's new, no thank you. Uh, isn't that just like reality? I think there's a bug inside of it. All right. Okay, so coming out of the package, we see we have these little metal wires, which are a lot better, in my opinion, than those plastic things we have to deal with nowadays. You might be thinking, how do you get to the back? Oh, you know what? I forgot. I just had to think about it. Right behind me, I do have my metal cutters, or my uh, clippers. These guys right here. So I do... I could sit here and then twist them, or I can do it with more power, you know, the more manly way. And of course, these just go in the recycling bin because they are just plastic on top of metal, totally recyclable. Unlike the plastic ties, uh -uh, not as recyclable. Something just fell off. I'm pretty sure it was Wolverine. And there's this helmet. Let me take his helmet off carefully. And let's go over to the other side. There's nothing over there. So all these ties right here, snip, snip, snip. And we got it straight off of there and the packaging just goes in the recycling bin. I don't see a little booklet with this, which is kind of strange because I'm so used to seeing booklets. All right, we got more little metal ties. My goodness, this thing is covered with metal ties, but at least they're not little plastic things. There's some tape that's been on there for 25 years. I'm just amazed that it's still in the package for 25 years. I, I don't think I could have resist opening it back in the day. I, I actually, yeah, I worked at KB Toys and I just feel like it was a bad idea because I ended up spending more than I was making. <laughs> I just love toys so much. I, I had so many Zoids that I just never had time to put together because I was working so many extra hours. All right, so this shield comes down for reasons that don't make sense. I don't know why they didn't just glue it in place. I don't, maybe, I don't, I have no idea why would it go like that. That is a weird design idea. All right, so we got this little piece right here. It looks like it's actually made out of metal. It looks like something you would stick into uh, like a like a like your speakers. All right, we got batteries in the bottom. I don't see any foaming coming out of them. So I don't know, they may not be working, they may be working. Let's find out if there's an on button somewhere. I guess I should look at the bottom of the box more carefully. All right, on the bottom of the box, it does say there's batteries. It doesn't say, I don't see anything about an on switch. Let's put his, oh, I see what it is. See inside of his hand now, these were like, there were these light up toys that did the exact same thing. They had these um, things right here that the batteries were in the action figure and you had like a sword for Psylocke. The one thing I wanna know is can his head come down? No, so he's going to be permanently stuck like this. So whenever you're having to play with him, you're going to have to crouch him over to make him look like he's uh, coming after you, bub. I'm just really old. <sighs> yeah. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and measure him while he's still standing erect before I put him on the vehicle. So um, he, he's not going to get that head down, unfortunately. I wish it would go down, but nope. <laughs> All right. So the head will not go down. All right. So we got... He is about 12 centimeters tall, and that makes him about five inches tall, which is just right for superhero action figures, putting him beside a Batman. Uh, he is looking up at the sky, but he is the same height, essentially. And if I can just mush these together into one, I'd be a happy camper, because then I would have a Dark Claw figure. Somebody, somebody, please mass produce some Dark Claw figures. Every now and then I catch somebody who does their own mass produce those things i want some dark claw and some other amalgam figures all right his claws are a softer plastic but not as soft as oops and you remember the glue is 25 years old so it's going to start coming off uh he's just coming apart all over the place <laughs> okay so be really careful with 25 year old action figures um so let's try to find out if we have articulation without things falling off 
And look, look, I hope, Will, you're not feeling like this is anything against you at all. No, you didn't. No, you're fine. Nothing about you at all. So I hope you're not thinking that, oh, he's criticizing me. No, no, not at all. Not at all. All right. So I'm just, uh, just noticing things are falling apart and it's nothing to do with you. All right. It's just the manufacturer put, you know, glue in there that didn't last 25 years. Yeah, it happens. All right. So the arm goes around 360 degrees. The wrist goes around 360 degrees. Uh, there's nothing in the abs, thankfully, because that isn't necessary. His leg goes up that much and doesn't really go back. I guess his butt won't let it happen. His knee does bend uh, pretty much 90 degrees, but be careful. He's got one of those pinching joints that I hate personally because when you're closing them, I remember getting pinched by those a lot in the last few, like the last 50 some years of my life. <laughs> all right. Um, so we got all the articulation points. Um, just be careful again, the glue on these, uh, see, that's not an articulation point, but now it is. So this one doesn't rotate, which is kind of weird. This one does, but this one doesn't. So his left arm does not have a rotation point. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of articulation. That's not a point. He doesn't have a waist. He doesn't have a head. That's why you normally have seven points as you have a head or, well, normally, yeah, your odd number is your head. All right, let's get him onto the sled. Oh, oh, we got to get his oxygen mask on or he'll pass out in space. I mean, he can still survive, but he'll just be in conscience until somebody can resurrect him. All right, let's see if I can get on his chin first. All right, so the trick is you got to get on the chin first and then fold it up onto the head. And like, it's not like I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I, this is my only Wolverine. No, I have other Wolverine figures. All right, so, oh, maybe this is why it comes off. So you can put it up to slide him in all the way. And then we're gonna get his arm top of this the metal on metal connection and that should activate something if the batteries are still alive it appears that they are not still alive so i don't expect them to <laughs> i really don't expect them to stay alive after uh, 25 years of sitting in there so my next step will be i need to go get a screwdriver take the battery out the battery's out i think it's a double a and i have some double a so i'll make a different video to show off that i just want to show them off on his actual flying ship all right so we got okay so that makes more sense of why that comes up now although they could have just did a design difference to make it slide in there better so while he's flying in space none of those space bugs called stars will hit him on his windshield and get him in the mouth yeah okay yeah that makes sense all right so the colors are very vibrant, popping. We got the um, the yellow that looks almost like booger yellow and the indigo that's, I wonder if that was blue at one time. Like, you know, cause their colors are yellow and blue, but this is, this sled is indigo, which I like the color indigo. I just wonder at one time, was it blue and it just faded. All right, so we got that. We got three buttons over here that don't do anything or four buttons over here that don't do anything. Two buttons on the back that don't do anything and his feet are all the way in. They got a connection port back here and I'm just testing out to see if it's gonna crumble because again, things, they, I have action figures that fell apart when I found them, unfortunately, because they just, the plastic is crumbling over time. All right, we got that in the front. So uh, tune in for part two when I will go and grab some batteries and uh, change it out. I don't want to leave you guys hanging and, and there's no pause button on this. I guess I, if I, unless I can figure out how to merge the two videos.